Okay, after four years out on the um, Sea-Doo Spark, it's finally happened. I had my first breakdown out on the water. Luckily though, it was basically right outside home after we had been out for an adventure. So it wasn't t too bad. But what happened was I essentially sucked up a heap of weeds. There was a cluster and I thought, uh-oh, and I went through it and then it went and then, yeah, the ski wouldn't go. So I idled home, which was probably only like 100 meters. So it was very, very close to home. But it set me back a whopping 650 Australian dollars to get it fixed because I idled home and then tried to pump it out when I got home. I melted the actual pump. So today, in today's video, we're gonna talk about how to uh, avoid this huge, huge cost and uh, headache. So let's roll the intro and let's get into everything you need to do to make sure you guys don't break down when you're out on the water. The first way to prevent a breakdown is all in regards to preparation, because basically, Majority of your breakdowns are caused because you haven't generally done something prior to leaving the dock or, or leaving the trailer. So the first thing you wanna do, make sure you fill up with petrol because you don't wanna break down just because you've run out of petrol in the middle of the ocean. That is the worst case scenario. You're also gonna to wanna to quickly check your oil and your water or your fluids just to make sure they're topped up and ready to go because that's what's gonna cause your ski to overheat and then obviously cause a breakdown. So those could be completely eliminated basically just by doing your preparation before you leave the dock. And the other cause for breakdown is typically when you suck something up into your ski because that's how the jet ski works, sucks water up, pumps it out the back. But if it's not water that it's sucking up, that's when you're gonna have the problems that I had. I sucked up the seaweed rocks, shells, too much sand if you take it close to the beach. So, how to beach your jet ski is a big question I get frequently. And typically, I like to stand up on the ski as I'm coming into shore. I'm just idling as I get closer. And then when I can see that it's gonna shallow out and become less than, say, knee deep, I'll pull out the lanyard, which obviously cuts the ski, and therefore, you're free to jump off into the shallow water and pull your ski up onto the beach. That way you're gonna eliminate any chance of running up onto the beach and sucking all the sand, shells, rocks, any other debris that the beach does have that you are on. Because that is a surefire way to ruin your day. Just because jet skis can go on really shallow water doesn't mean you have to always take that risky run. Just because you're in the mangroves and there's this fully sick run, Remember, there's probably mangroves underneath, there's gonna be shells, rocks, and everything. So that's when you could possibly come into a spot of bother. So double check your depth of water before you um, start smashing it. Uh, what do you do if something is in the water in front of you, like in my situation? Next time what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna pull the key out and stop the uh, motor so it stops sucking up the debris straight away. Uh, and that would have avoided the $650 for me. But make sure it's safe to do so. You're probably not gonna to wanna to do that if you're going at 60, 70, 80 kilometers, but if it's safe to do so, you see something in the water in front of you and you can't turn or get out of the way, just pull the key. It's the, it's the easiest option. Finally, what do you do if you have sucked something up into your ski like I had? From my experience now, what I would do, I would not turn the ski back on until I'd got home. I'd either have a friend or call the rescue boat to tow me back into shore and then deal with the problem once you got home because as I found out the hard way, the water wasn't actually going in because I blocked the, uh, the tube and therefore I burnt the pump out. So you're gonna to wanna to get back to shore without using the ski. Uh, if you do need to be towed, remember you either wanna get a tow tap uh, where you can turn off and turn back on the hose that lets the water run through the, through the ski to cool it. If not, find the clamp and find the right tube to clamp so then you can be towed back at a decent pace. If you don't have either of those, like I learned on the Sea-Doo Spark, apparently you can't actually tow tap those without cutting into the side. Um, you need to be towed back at basically five to 10 kilometers an hour. So keep it extremely slow so water doesn't get into your engine. 
you got any other questions, guys, drop them in the comments. Don't forget, if there's anything else you'd like me to do, see me do, pop it in the comments. And um, thanks for subscribing. We've got plenty of people jumping on board, and we'll see you out on the water.